morning. It's cool this morning. Amen. And um, reminds me of uh, what it says in Genesis, how God walked with Adam in the cool part of the day. And um, he is here this morning with us, and we're going to be worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for being a part of this worship service here at our church. Um, next week, uh, we should have everything in place uh, for the um, for the for the radio station, and uh, hopefully, and so um, come and be a part of that. And uh, we'll have to choose a, a radio station that's not being used, and um, and you can tune into that and listen to it in the coolness of your car. Hopefully, it'll be this cool next week too, and. Uh, it can stay like this till sometime in April and turn off pretty, right? <laughs> so um, that would be wonderful. But uh, I love every one of you. Thank you for being here today. Again, I want to remind you um, that we're still taking our our baby bottle um, baby bottles for the Faith Maternity Center. We're not uh, giving out any right now, but if you have one, you can bring it, and we'll make sure it gets to Faith Maternity Center. Also, um, there are some vegetables down here um, by the by the basket. If you would like uh, some cucumbers and tomatoes and squash, um, Miss Janet brought that this morning. So uh, we we want you to come and make yourself um, at home and get get you uh, some cucumbers and squash and tomatoes if you'd like, and uh, be a good thing for for lunch. This uh, and uh, just uh, come and be a part of that. But uh, also, if you want a, a hymnal, we we have the hymnal here, and uh, as always, we have a um, we have a a uh, the the offering box here at, at my left, and uh, it's at your right, my left. And so, if you'd like to give your offering after after church, you're more than welcome to come up and give your offering. And uh, we just love you. We appreciate you. We need to continue to lift up all of the people in our in our nation that are stricken with COVID. Also, we need to uh, lift up our um, political leaders, every one of them, just to lift them up so that they can have wisdom during this time. And we need to lift up the um, families of those Marines that were killed at Camp Pendleton on Friday. Um, they were killed in an amphibious um, assault vehicle. Um, accident and so please uh, be in prayer for them um, those stories stick in my head because uh, in not too long we'll have a marine out there also and so uh, just be uh, in prayer for them be in prayer for Josh as he uh, gets ready for uh, going out on the 28th of September um, and just pray for all of us to have wisdom, all of us to feel the blessings of Almighty God. And um, we just thank you for being here this, today, and we just pray God's richest blessings upon you. Let's bow together and let's pray. Lord, I come before you, and I thank you so much for just you being you. You're so wonderful and so great, and Lord, thank you for allowing us to be here in your presence, worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we thank you that we're able to come together as the family of God. Every one of us are a part of your family, and uh, we want to just say thank you for that. Lord, we were made a part of your family when Jesus washed us clean in his precious blood. Lord, we know that there's no other way to become a part of this family other than to have a personal relationship with you, and we thank you for that. Lord, today again, we ask for your blessings to be upon every person that's here uh, and every person that is listening via Facebook or, or that uh, is here in this, this uh, um, parking lot. Lord, be with us all. Bless us in the name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen. There's something that I forgot, um, and I continue to forget it. Uh, if, you had a, uh, if you have an August birthday, a July birthday, um, a June birthday, a May birthday, going all the way back to March. We haven't celebrated birthdays here at our church. If you have a, um, a birthday that uh, you've had since March, and, um, and we want to sing happy birthday to you this morning. So uh, I'm going to let um, 
Uh, Miss Eva, lead us in that. I know this is kind of a spur of the moment, but uh, if you have a if you've had a birthday, and we just want to say thank you uh, for being here today, and also we want to tell you that we love you, and we wish God's richest blessings upon you. start with hymn 505 he touched me 505 on the last verse we're going to sing that refrain through twice This morning we're going to be looking into the Word of God at a portion of Scripture that comes to us from Genesis chapter 32 and verses 22 and following. Genesis chapter 32 verses 22 and following. And as you're turning there this morning, I want you to know that 
when I was growing up, I loved going to my mom, my grandmother's and my grandfather's house. Now, I had two sets of grandparents, uh, and the one that I'm about to talk about, they were called Ma Janie and Paul Pete. Now, Paul Pete was a man that was very short in stature. He was about uh, probably five foot one, and he always wore a cowboy hat and cowboy shirts and cowboy boots, and he was a cowboy in the middle of Mississippi, so uh, he, was, uh, he was kind of an oddity, but uh, he loved doing two things. He loved gardening. Well, three things, let me put it this way. He loved gardening. He loved talking, and he loved watching old westerns. So I would go to my, my Paul Pete's, and I would sit next to him on his couch, and he'd turn on Gunsmoke, and we'd watch Gunsmoke, and we'd, uh, we would uh, watch all that was going on there with, uh, with um, Marshall Matt Dillon and Kitty, and I remember one person in particular that was a part of the, ta the, the cast that uh, was a part of Gunsmoke. His name was Chester. Now, Chester was the deputy before Festus Hagen. And there was a, uh, a, a something that was very, very unique about Chester. He was a man that walked with a distinct limp. You'd see him coming down the the the, the wooden um, the wooden uh, sidewalk, and he, he would be just walking with that limp. You always remembered him because of his distinct gait, and uh, so. Every time I, I see someone limping, I think about Chester. And today, we're going to discover that there was a man in the Word of God that walked with a limp, and his name was Jacob. And he was not walking with a limp because he was playing a character. He was not walking with a limp because he had a birth defect. No, he was walking with a limp because God had touched him. Now, in Genesis chapter 32, and verses 24 through 32, listen to what the Word of God says. It says, So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. And when the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. And when the man then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And the man asked, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome. And Jacob said, Please, tell me your name but he replied why do you ask me my name then he blessed him there and jacob called the place Penel, saying it is because i saw god face to face and yet my life was spared and the sun rose above him as he passed Penel, and he was limping because of his hip therefore to this day the israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near the tendon. Let's pray. Father, I come before you today, and I thank you so much that you intervene in our lives, that you touch us, and you do make us whole, just through the mighty power of your hand and through the love that comes from your heart. Lord, thank you so much for being with us and transforming us and doing wonderful works in our lives. Lord, today we ask you just to be with us all. Help us to hear your voice and help us to apply your teachings to our everyday life. It's in the name of Jesus I do pray. Amen. Now, as we begin to look at the Word of God today, we need to understand that sometimes God has to get us alone before he can speak to our heart. Now, as we were reading in, in Genesis chapter 32, we see that Jacob was all alone. Jacob's family uh, and he had been traveling for some time from Lebanon and now they were about 20 miles north of the Red Sea and they were coming over and they were going into the promised land. They were going to cross a little book called Jacob, Jacob, Jabok. And as they 
they were about to cross over this, Jacob told his family to go on before him, and they took uh, all of their possessions, and Jacob was left alone. This is described for us here in verses 22 through 24. It says, that night, Jacob got, got up and, his, and, and, and took his two wives, his two maidservants, and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all of his possessions, so Jacob was left alone. So Jacob was left alone. Now, I want you to think about this. Here's Jacob. He is experiencing a lonely time of night. It's the middle of the night. He's all by himself. His wife and his children and all of his possessions have gone over, and they are just across that, uh, that creek. But there he is all by himself in the midst of that that land. He's just outside of the promised land. He's all alone with his thoughts. He's all alone with his regrets. Now, remember, Jacob was not a, a perfect person in any way, shape, or form. He was a man who had a past. He was a man who had done things that were terrible in the eyes of God. But here he was. He was, lone, and he was alone at this lonely time of night. He was alone with his thoughts. He was alone with his regrets. And in the midst of this time, God comes to Jacob. He comes to Jacob, and he confronts Jacob. Listen to what it says here in verse 24. It says, So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. Now, I want you to know, this was not a man that uh, Jacob was wrestling with. We just heard in those verses of Scripture that I read, that this was almighty God that he was wrestling with. He was there, and God was confronting Jacob with the things that he had done. He was wrestling, struggling with him there uh, uh, across that creek. He was all alone, and he was wrestling with him for some time. He wrestled with him all night long, it says, and even until daybreak. And as he is wrestling with, with God, God confronts him, but then he also comforts Jacob. Later on, we're going to see that he blesses Jacob in these verses of Scripture. As we hear all of that this morning, i got a question for you. Have you ever felt alone? During this time of isolation that we've been through for COVID-19, and we've been by ourselves a whole lot, and... We've felt alone and lonely. and But as we were physically alone, I want you to know we're never spiritually alone. God is always with us, just as he was with Jacob. Jacob was at a, in a lonely time. He was alone physically, but all of a sudden, God was there. And God never left Jacob alone, just like he never leaves us alone. In Hebrews, he tells us he'll never leave us nor forsake us. In Psalm 23, he says he'll always be walking beside us, even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That means when we're going through hard times in our life, God does not leave us. He's there with us. He's holding us up. He's bringing us through. He's giving us the leadership and direction and strength that we need. And let's not forget, he gives us love, amen? And he gives us that forgiveness. And so even when we feel alone, God is still there. And sometimes God has to get us all by ourselves before we will listen to him. You know, there have been times in my life where I felt alone. Felt like nobody really cared, but... In the midst of that, God came to me, and he showed me that he cared. He ministered to my heart, and I listened to him because I was there alone. Sometimes God has to get you alone before he can speak to your heart. But then, secondly to that, we need to see that sometimes we feel like we're struggling in our relationship with God. Can I get a witness this morning? You ever been there? 
Oh, we all have. We've all felt like we were struggling in our relationship with Almighty God. Here it is in verse 24. It says, So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. Now, again, we know that that was Almighty God, and Jacob was wrestling. He was struggling in his relationship with Almighty God. Now, I want you to remember what's going on in Jacob's life. Jacob is about to go home again. He is about to go back to the promised land. He had been in Laban's home and living with, with his father-in-law Laban for some years, and he's about to go back into the promised land. And when he went in, back into the promised land, he was reminded of the struggles that he had had all of his life. He was reminded, first of all, that struggle that he had had with his brother Esau. Now, you remember who Esau is, Jacob's brother. Esau was a manly man. He was full of testosterone. <laughs> he was, uh, if, you, if you were to take John Cena and put him into the Bible, that would be Esau. He was a big old fella. He was a man that, uh, that went out and he hunted and he fished. And he was loved by his father because he was a manly man and he could fix the best chili in the world. And so um, his father loved him so very much. But Jacob, Jacob, he was his twin brother, and he was a little bit smaller than, than Esau. He was a man that uh, was second born. He was only born about probably three or four seconds after Esau. But because Esau was first born, he had the birthright. He was going to inherit everything that his father had, and Jacob didn't like that a bit. And so he, um, he tricked his brother out of his birthright. He was a, de a deceiver. He was a man who, who had tricked his own brother, had done terrible things, and he knew that as soon as he crossed over into the promised land, he was going to meet up with Esau face to face, and he didn't know what that meeting was going to be like. He had already sent uh, people ahead of him with gifts for, for, for Esau so that uh, he, could, uh, he could tell him he's coming home, but he didn't want to, want to make any trouble with him. He didn't know how Esau was going to react to him, and so he was scared to death. He was reminded of that struggle, but he was also reminded of the struggle that he had had with his father-in-law, Laban. Now, Laban had two, two daughters. One, one's daughter's name was Rachel, and the other's name was Leah. Now, Leah was older than Rachel, and Leah was not as easy on the eyes as Rachel. And, uh, and Jacob looked at Rachel, and he said, Woo! I want to marry that girl. She's beautiful. And I, wanna, I, want, to, I want her to be my wife. But uh, he went to Laban, as was the custom, and I asked him, and he said, you can't marry Rachel. you got to marry You have to marry Leah. And so he forced him to work for him for some time and marry Leah. And then uh, finally he married Rachel, but he had struggled with his father-in-law, Laban. And he actually had gotten up in the middle of the night, and he was going back to, to his home. And um, he left without telling Laban, and that was kind of a... They had just had a big argument. You can read about that over there in the preceding chapters of Genesis. And you'll see how Laban even chased him down. So there was a struggle in his relationship with Laban. There was a struggle in his relationship with, with Esau. And now he was wrestling with Almighty God. He was now trying to wrestle with God and get his way with the Lord. Bless me, he said. I'm not going to let you go till you bless me. I'm going to have my way. But have you ever been there? You felt like you were struggling with God. Like you knew, uh, knew something that you wanted to do or something you thought God wanted you to do, and you're there struggling with him, and, and he's, he's trying to get his way with Almighty God, but he struggles with the Lord. You know, we don't need to be struggling in our relationship with God. We all do, and that's... Uh, that is uh, something that happens. But we need to understand that even when we're struggling, God loves us. And it says that uh, in his word that God wants what's best for us. He's working everything together for our good. 
And so when we're, when we're going through our life and we even feel like we're struggling with, with everybody around us and struggling with Almighty God, we need to stop and we need to say, God, I don't want to struggle anymore. I'm just going to trust you. I give up. I'm, gonna strugg I'm, I'm not struggling with you anymore. I give up. I'm going to follow you where you want me to go. I'm going to do what you want me to do. I'm going to be the person that you want me to be. And when you do that, God will truly bless you. Now, listen again to what's happening here. God is there with Jacob. And as God is there with Jacob, he is wrestling with him. And God changes Jacob forever. He, he changes Jacob forever. Verse 25, listen to what it says here. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Now, as he wrestled with God, God allowed him to wrestle with him all night long. Now, could God have, could he have destroyed Jacob at any time that he wanted to? Yeah, he could have. But God loved Jacob, and he wanted to teach Jacob a lesson. And the first lesson that he wanted to teach Jacob was this. He is in charge. God's in charge. It doesn't matter what we think or what we, we say. God is in charge. He's the creator of the universe. He's the one who created us out of nothing, and therefore he is in charge just solely because of who he is. He is the boss. And God, God showed that to Jacob while he was wrestling with him. He allowed him to wrestle with him. He allowed him to, to, to tussle with him until, until daybreak. But God was still saying, look, Jacob, you think you're big stuff? But I'm still in charge. God is in charge. He's, he, is, he is in charge, and he is directing our lives and showing us the things that we need to do. I tell you, so many times God treats us like um, we treat our children. I remember when uh, when my son Nathan was little, I, um, we had a um, we had a um, oven in our house, and uh, well, praise the Lord, we always had an oven in our house. But <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I remember one day we were baking cornbread and and. Nathan was about the size of my grandson Easton. He was toddling around, and he he was running all over the kitchen. and And I would walk up to him, and he he would run to that that oven. I'd tell him no, 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 and I'd take him and I'd take him across the room. And just as I put him down, he'd run back towards that oven. And that oven, if he touched the door of that oven, he was going to get burned. So I had to, as his father, run over there and pick him up and put him down where he needed to go. But as I put him down, I had to swat him. Now his eyes filled up with tears. He started crying like I had hurt him badly. But what I was doing was I was keeping him from hurting himself. Why did I do that? Did I do that because I didn't love Nathan? No, I, I did that because I did and I do love Nathan. And I was trying to keep him from hurting himself because I'm his father. God does that to us sometimes. He has to show us that he's in charge, but as he's in charge, he's also showing us his great love. Now, as, as Jacob was wrestling with God, God showed him that he was in charge, but I want you to see that as he wrestled with God, Jacob was changed and he would never be the same again. And uh, in verse uh, verse 25 and following, it says, when, a, when the man saw that he could not overpower Jacob, he touched him in the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Now, as he touched his hip, his hip was knocked out of place and the tendon was, 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 uh, was twisted so that his that so he would never be the same again. It says in verse 31 that as he walked past Penel, he was limping because of his hip. Now, 
Jacob would limp all of his life because he had he had been touched by God in the hip. Now, did God do that so that he could he could hurt Jacob or make him less effective? No, he did that so Jacob could remember what he had learned there as he wrestled with God, and also he wanted him to never walk the same again. When people saw Jacob walking, it was just like uh, uh, when I saw Chester or on, on television, I, I knew him by his limp. They knew Jacob by his limp, and they knew the reason why Jacob limped was because God had touched him, and he was never the same again. See, he was never the same again, not only because of the, the, um, the, the limp that he walked with, but he was also never the same again because God blessed him. Listen to what it says here in verse 26. It says, Then the man said, Let me go for his daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And the man asked him, What is your name? He answered, he, he answered, Jacob. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome. And Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask me my name? Then he blessed him there. Now, again, Jacob, Jacob was never the same again because the blessing that God put upon him. Jacob name was changed in a moment. Now, do you know what Jacob actually means? Deceiver. Liar. Trickster. That's what Jacob means. But then he said, you're no longer going to be called a trickster or a deceiver. You're going to be called Israel. Because you have wrestled with God, you have struggled with God and with men and have overcome what he was saying is, you're, when people say your name now, they're going to know that you've been with God and that you've got the victory. They're no, no longer going to say your name and say, oh, don't trust him. He's a deceiver. He'll trick you. He'll, he'll, he'll be over you in some way, shape, or form. No, from now on when people said Jacob's name, Israel, they were going to be reminded that he had walked with God and, and that God had touched him and that God had blessed him and that God had given him the victory. Isn't that good? And names meant something in the Old Testament times. It uh, not only was something that you were called by, but it revealed your very character to people. That's why, why uh, Simon's name was changed to Peter, why Saul's name was changed to Paul. And why Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Now, God gives him, gives him that blessing. And he, he um, changed his name to remind him of that, uh, that wonderful blessing that he had bestowed upon him. God gives the one who struggles or, or walks with him a great blessing. Now, he was changed. He was changed, and when we are, are touched by Almighty God, we're changed. We're changed not only physically, but some, all the time we're changed spiritually. We're changed spiritually because when God touches us and he intervenes in our life, he saves our soul, and he changes our eternal destination forevermore. No longer are we walking towards a devil's hell. We're walking towards God's heaven and we'll spend all eternity with God, and we praise the Lord for that. We're changed because of the great blessing that God places upon our life, that blessing that is called salvation. This morning, I want you to see something, though, that as Jacob was changed, not only was Jacob changed, but his, his descendants were changed forever. His descendants were changed forever. Verse 29, it says, Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask me my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Penel, saying, it is, the, it is because I saw, the face, saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. And the sun rose above him as he passed Penel. And 
he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon attached to the socket of the hip because the socket of Jacob's hip was touched near that tendon. Now, this changed the way that Jacob's descendants were going to be looked upon. This changed the way that, that, it, that his descendants were going to live their lives even to this day. Not only that dietary thing that they were talking about, not eating the tendon that was near the hip, but then you can see the blessing that God has bestowed upon the nation of Israel even to this day. Israel is God's chosen, peop chosen people. They are God's chosen people because that blessing came to Jacob so long ago at this very place that we're talking about in Genesis. Their lives were changed. Their whole destiny was changed. Their whole culture was changed because God touched this man who was their descendant. You know, when God touches you, he not only changes you, but he changes your family too. Why does he change your family? He changes your family because he changes you and you're a different person towards your family from that moment forward. No longer are you living for yourself, but you're living for God. And when your children grow up around a person that is living for God, they are being taught the word of God. That word is being given to them every single day. And as they receive that word and as they receive that teaching from you and the Holy Spirit touches uh, your children as they are hearing the word of God and as they're studying the word of God and as he is saving their soul, God transforms their lives and he transforms their, their whole being for not just for a moment, but for all eternity. And not only are your children blessed, but your children's children and their children are blessed. It affects the entire generations that come after you and your family. Why are they affected? Because God touched you. Because God's blessed you. God is good, amen? He not only touches us and changes us, but he changes our families and he changes our, our descendants. He changes us by his great power and by his great love. Today, as you have been listening to this word from Almighty God, I want you to know that God wants desperately to touch you. He wants to change your life. He wants to save your soul. He wants to bless you in so many ways. And as he blesses you, he wants to not only bless you, but he wants to bless your family too. So today, if you're here without Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, won't you please turn to him today? Won't you please give your heart and your soul to the Lord? And as you do that, you'll be saved forevermore. As you turn to God, believing what it says in the word of God about Jesus Christ, calling upon him to save your soul, repenting of your sin, turning from your sin and turning to Almighty God and asking him to save you, he'll save you immediately and you'll remain saved for all eternity. If you'll just turn to the Lord and ask him to save you today, he will. Today, if you're saved and you're struggling over some situation in your life, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen next week. It's and you're struggling uh, with things, you may be like Jacob. There may be a strained relationship between you and someone in your, in your world. And you're worried about how they're going to receive you or what's going to happen. Give that to God, amen? Know that God's still in control and that God's going to bless you through every situation in your life. Whatever you're struggling with, give it to God. And you'll be glad that you did. This morning... Whatever the Lord has told you to do, say yes to him during this decision time. And you'll be transformed. You'll be blessed. And you'll be glad that you did this. Let's pray together. Father, today I just come before you and I ask you to be with us all. Help us all just to, to reach out and grab you by the hand. Lord, help us all to know that you are our hope. You are our peace. You are our only source of blessing. Today, God, I ask you to bless everyone that's here. Bless them with salvation if they need to be saved. 
Bless them with healing if they need to be healed. Bless them with encouragement if they need to be encouraged. Lord, you do that work that needs to be done in our life. It's in the name of Jesus I do pray. Amen. Our imitation hymn is 480, Only Trust Him, 480. Amen. Thank you for being here today. Before we have our concluding prayer, I want to remind you that the backpack uh, blessing is going to be next uh, Saturday and um, on August the 8th. And, uh, it, it, and on Friday, we need people to help us pack these uh, backpacks. And uh, we just ask you to, to come and be a part of that and just, uh, just um, truly come and uh, and be a part of that so that uh, we can bless our community every child that uh, goes to r6 and every child that goes to st joseph's will have a backpack and uh, if if you have uh, other children that uh, need backpacks just let us know and uh, um, in order to be a part of this you've got to um, to register online and we want you to to register online so that we can have a backpack ready for your your child as you come and uh, so we want everybody to come and be a part of this. And I uh, also want to thank you for giving so mightily to the baby bottle campaign. Um, we are, again, still taking up those baby bottles. But, uh, um, and also, if you haven't given your offering and, and you, you would like to, the box is here to my left. And so, um, again, there's fresh vegetables here. Come and make yourself at home and get some of those fresh vegetables before, before you leave. And I want to also remind you, if you want to talk to me about something of, about God, if you want to talk to me about salvation, about a call God's got on your heart, or just something you need counseling with, I'm here for you. And um, just come up and, and I'll talk to you or pray with you, whatever you need to do during this time. And uh, we just want you to know that we love you. I do uh, pray God's richest blessings upon you. I pray that God would bless you, that he would keep you, that he would make his face to shine upon you, and he would give you peace. We love you, and, uh, and I just pray that you will have a wonderful day and a wonderful week in the Lord. Let's pray together. And today as we pray, I'd like to ask Miss Eva would dismiss us in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we're just so thankful for this beautiful morning for our church, Lord, and uh, that you do touch us and that you bless us and that you never leave us alone. Lord, just remember, uh, help us remember that as we go throughout our week, Lord, as the teachers start school this week. We just pray that you give them strength and that they remember you're with them um, and that we can um, bless our community with our backpack program as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.